All right, so we're going to talk about how to approximate trig function values. So you'll want a calculator um, for just uncommon degree measures. So like when we have something like sine of 47 or cotangent of 83 degrees, you're going to just want to use a, a calculator for that. Um, we, we've talked about some of the more standard ones, but these types of measures are a little more oddball, I guess. Um, so a key for your calculator you want to make sure it's in degrees and not radians. So you're going to want to check. If you don't know how to do that, um, you know, everybody can have different calculators. They can all work a little bit differently. So you might have to use Google for your calculator. So I would pause the video just to make sure you know how to do this. Now, my calculator has a DRG button, um, so I can just use that and then it's, it's pretty easy to find it. But if you cannot find this button, then just pause this video. Try to figure out how to do that before you move on. Okay, so I want to just go through a few examples of how you actually can plug this into your calculator because I know it sounds really easy, but there's a couple of weird situations that can come up. This is one of them. So I've got degrees and minutes. Okay, so here's the deal. You might have to convert to purely degrees in this situation. It depends on your calculator. So you might need to use Google to, to find out if your calculator has a degrees and minutes button. My calculator has this, so it has degrees, minutes, and seconds as a button. And so then I can just enter this straight in and do it like that. But since you know not everybody watching this video is gonna have this button, I'll just remind you how do we convert to just pure degrees. So remember in one degree there are 60 minutes. So I can go ahead and do this calculation here to get 15 minutes is 0.25 degrees. And then I just go ahead and take the cosine of 32.25 and I can use the degrees button or not if I've already told my calculator that it needs to be in degrees. This is redundant and you don't have to plug it in. Okay, so I plug that into your calculator. Just see if you get to this. Try it two ways, you know, try plugging in the decimal and then see if you can find the button that does degrees and minutes. That, that would be my two cents on how to try this. Okay, so moving on to secant of 55.321 degrees. All right, so the, the deal here is there is no dedicated calculator function for secant or cosecant or cotangent. So when this happens, you've got to manipulate this. So remember that secant is equivalent to one over cosine. So I'm literally just gonna rewrite the same function except one over cosine of that degree measure. And then if I plug that into my calculator, I get 1.7554. And so that's it for that one. All right, so for sine of negative 105 degrees, um, so this is really just a simple, you can just plug this straight into your calculator. There's no special tricks. You don't have to worry about this. So I just get negative 0.9659. And then for one over cosecant of 233.45 degrees, all right, so you should probably have a guess as to what to do with this. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I can just rewrite this as sine of 233.45 degrees, and then bada bing, bada boom, negative 0.80334. Okay, now to find theta, we've, we've had some situations where we had to go here and find theta, this is a lot harder to do if you have non, like we know like sine of, of 45 degrees or sine of 60 degrees or whatever, but you can get some, some weird values where you get like a weird theta. And so we have to use inverse trig functions to do this. The typical ones on a calculator are this inverse sine, inverse cosine and inverse tangent. And so just to make it clear what this means, so these functions give the measure of an angle theta whose function is that desired value or answer. And just an extra note, inverse trig functions return angles in quadrant one only. Okay, so they're going to always be between zero and 90 degrees. So just a thing for you to note there. Okay, so now let's talk about a few examples. So I've got cosine of theta equals 0.931145. All right, so I wanna make sure that you know how to properly use notation here. So the way that we think about this, you're really taking the inverse cosine of each side. So in setting this up, notice that I've literally done that. I've taken inverse cosine of each side. And the thing about inverses is 
when you take the inverse of a function, you're just gonna be left with, in, in this case, theta. So technically what's happening here is we have theta equals this. And then inverse cosine of this decimal, that is something you should just be able to plug into your calculator. So if you don't have a calculator that can do these types of calculations, I would recommend that you get one because it's gonna be pretty important in a trig class and there's really no other way to like figure this out nicely. And so if I do that, I get theta is equal to 21.386 degrees. So make sure that you note that it is degrees. It's not just a number, it is degrees. All right, so I've also got cotangent of theta equals 1.753892. Now you'll notice that we don't have an inverse cotangent on the calculator. So once again, we have to manipulate. So to manipulate this, I just write it as, as the inverse, that's it. Um, so I've got tangent of one over that number. And now I can go ahead and I can take inverse tangent of each side, plug that in my calculator, I get 29.69 degrees. And so that's it. That's uh, Those are all the notes that I have for you on this particular topic. So if that was helpful, consider leaving a like or commenting on this video. And otherwise I will talk to you guys next time.